All right. <laughs> Hello, my friends. All right. By popular demand, we are going to continue our efforts in advancing your knowledge in railings. This is part two of railings. And the first thing I'm going to do is fix a mistake. I accidentally misspoke in my last video about railings. I reviewed it and I saw a mistake. And so let's fix that first and then we'll move forward with the understanding. All right. Let's move my face right over here. And then we'll go to 3D. And this is our cutest little building that we're working on. Now, last time I was talking about railings and I had a, let's see, a residential rail and a little piece of residential rail. I'm just gonna put in a residential rail right there. Okay. And what I was talking to you guys about was these pickets. And I said, let's hit edit the type and go to the, you know, the, <clears throat> the railings, this first button is the horizontals and this second button is the verticals. And what we had was two inches there and two inches here. Now the pattern is every, is every two inches, but then we tossed in a, this little number here is a spacer that to the next pattern. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so it's every four inches total instead of two. So if I say, okay, then we've got every four inches, ding, 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 there's a, there's railings. So if I go in and let me just say, if I make this zero here and just concentrate on every four inches, the railing is the same railing. But the key is, let me just go to an elevation, building elevation, let's go to south and let's zoom in on our little railing here. Okay. And I want to show you that the first, boom, it puts in a railing right here at four inches in and every one, they're four inches apart. Okay. So that's what we're dealing with here. And so that's what I wanted to clear up. And so if I change that number, I can edit this and change that number. Let's say change it to six or eight inches. Let's go eight inches. Then the railings are, the pickets are ding, ding, ding. The first one is eight inches and then every one is eight inches after that. Just wanted to clear that up. Okay. So let's go back and um, replace this with something that so we can talk. Okay, so here we go. We've got this railing. We've got a top rail and we've got vertical pickets every four inches. I believe if we go look at the construction, yes, every four inches, we've got a three quarter inch vertical. Okay, let's say we want those at every two feet. Okay, two feet, bam. And we lost our dimension, but that's okay. So every two feet, ding, 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 ding. We've got these going across every two feet on our project. And what I want to show you guys is how to build a pattern. Okay. So <clears throat> in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that baluster and duplicate it a couple of times. Right now, our total pattern is six feet wide, but I want to go uh, two inches, I mean, two feet in, and then that railing happens. And then I just want to go two inches more and that railing happens, the next one, and then two inches more, and then that railing happens. That is a total of two foot four. So what I need to do, if I want these, the pattern to be every two feet, this total of the pattern needs to be two feet. So let's, we need to take that down to one foot eight. And so that the total equals two feet. And so let's take a look at it. There we go. We've got a pattern of three that's happening every two feet. See how this works? If we want the middle one to be a little bit beefier, then I would highlight the rail and I would say, okay, the center rail needs to be something like, I don't know, a square one and a half. There. So we can set this up and we can go to our elevation and take a look at it. Okay. So what we've got, let me put a dimension on here to show you what I'm talking about. Every two feet, this pattern happens. So we can build patterns. We just have to use our, use math to make this work. So let's just say we wanted this center piece to be a glass panel with brackets holding to it. Okay. And so 
what I need to do is spread these things out a little bit and also build ourselves a glass panel. So let's go build the glass panel. I would say file and I want a new family and up comes the templates. And I'm just going to pick the baluster post. Okay. Just like all these others. And so here is my, this is my template for working in. Okay. So let's build a one foot wide piece of glass. Okay. So I'm going to make an extrusion and I'm going to work um, with my, wait, I want my extrusion. I'm going to set my um, working plane to be centered left and right. Okay. And I am going to make an extrusion and the extrusion is going to go over six inches. You with me? And down and over one foot because we want a one foot wide panel. So there we go. We've got this, but we need it to be the right thickness. We don't suggest one foot thick of glass. We don't want that. We want it to start, um, maybe, maybe it's a half inch glass. And so I'm going to make it a quarter. It's going to start a quarter inch from us, and then it's going to go back one quarter inch from us. So it's a total of half an inch. Okay. There's our glass and my material. I'll set my material to glass. Okay. Hey, good. Okay. So I set the material to glass and I check the box and I say, oh, that looks really good. Let's load into the project. And it says, wait a minute, do you want to save it? I'll say, yeah, okay. I'm going to save it as um, glass panel for our railing. There we go. That's a good enough name for now. And I'm going to load in the project and it's in our project now. Okay. So now I can use it as my center post. Wait for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this guy. I'm going to say mm -hmm -hmm, baluster placement. And this guy is the baluster family. This middle one, I want this to be the glass panel that I just made. And if I leave it like this, it is going to just replace that glass panel. So that's not exactly what we want. See that glass panel sitting there and the brackets are all too close. So what we want to do is spread these verticals out so that they can be braces on the two sides of our glass. So we need to move them. Okay. So I'm going to edit this and we, this is where the math comes in. Okay. All right. Let's say the first baluster happens eight inches in. Okay. And then the second one, the, the one foot wide one happens eight inches later. And then we put another little one eight inches from that. All right. So we, boom. okay, so there we go. It has spread it out, but we need a little bracket to reach over and hold this thing. So what I can do is quickly dimension how wide this little bracket needs to be. Look at that, one and five eighths bracket over to catch that post. So if I come over here to my families, work, stick with me people, if I come over here to my families and I come down to railings and I find, there it is, glass panel for our railing. I'm going to edit that. One and five eighths. Remember that number. Okay. So let's come down here to our uh, left elevation, which is the elevation view. And we need a little bracket here. One and five eighths, if I remember. So I'm going to make an extrusion. Okay. And I would like this little extrusion to come over one and five eighths inch. Look at that. And so you can, you can build your bracket any shape and any size you want. And I'm just going to put one right in there. Okay. Just like that. It's holding the glass. You can make it any shape you want. Okay. I'm going to copy that little bracket down to here. So it's holding that side and I'm going to mirror it to that side. So we've got a cute little bracket here, but the thickness needs to be a little bit thicker than the glass so it can hold it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is bump that thickness up a little bit so that it's an inch wide bracket. Okay. That looks good to me. And I'm going to check the box and I'm going to say save and yes, override the old one. And then I'm going to load in the project and close it and wait for it. Bam. Okay. So it's, it's not that difficult, people, to build a pattern that works for you, but you have to do the math. You've got to think about how wide the panels are and how often the brackets are. 
and how they're you just have to do your own math as you're working along and so this is how patterns work for railings in Revit and I can make this whole thing a little bit bigger but as I make it bigger I have to remember to do the math in my um, in my baluster when I come back into here if I make it wider then I'm gonna have to change these numbers to make it a little bit wider so that it works but I just wanted to show you guys how patterns work and this is, it's a fantastic tool in Revit and you guys can do this but I just wanted to show you the basics of the patterning so that you can take your railings another step further I really hope that that helps you guys and I hope I hope that you guys can take railings and build your own railings and 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 make just about anything you want you can build them as detailed or as simple as you want all right so you guys have now a the tools that it takes to make some really nice railings if you guys have any questions about some complicated railings that you need just put them in the description box below and I will address them all right I hope that helps you guys and uh, well that concludes our railing um, demo for now and our understanding in Revit tips so until I see you again happy reveting get out there and get her done all right talk to you later bye bye